This is BoomerIncomeIdeas.com, the program where we explore options for boomers and seniors who are looking for ways to take charge of their financial future and live the third chapter of their life on their terms. And now, here's your host, Dan Farnsworth. Hi, and welcome to this segment of BoomerIncomeIdeas.com. Uh, today, we're going to be talking with someone that I think you're going to find pretty interesting. You know, if you're in the market for a career that can pay you six figures a year, uh, let you work from home and uh, make your own hours, uh, you're going to be fascinated by what uh, this person has to say because she's doing exactly that. Her name is Brenda B. Gerano, and she is a loan originator. Um, what we're going to be talking about today is the type of loan that she originates, which is a reverse mortgage. Now, this is not to try to convince you that you need a reverse mortgage. This is to give you an idea that you might want to think about becoming a reverse mortgage originator. Uh, with that in mind, let's welcome Brenda to the show. Hi, Brenda. Thanks. Uh, thanks for joining us today and welcome to the show. Thanks, Dan. Thanks for having me. You know, I'm excited to uh, talk to you today because I think that your story is uh, is very similar to what a lot of people in the baby boomer and senior era are is, is looking for. Uh, let's start out right. Let's get right into it. We'll start out with uh, you originate reverse mortgage loans, correct? Correct. Only reverse mortgage loans. Yeah, and we're going to talk about why you do that exclusively in just a minute. But in the meantime, can you tell me a little bit about? Your background as far as your business, how you got started, what's what's the history of your business? Well, my beginning uh, business history was in the insurance industry and I did that for 25 years and my parents came to me one day and asked me, you know, what do you know about a reverse mortgage because we're interested, we think this might be something that will fit our bill. So I did some research and happened to know an acquaintance who was in that business. So. I contacted him, John Mitchell, with Reverse Mortgage USA, and he helped my parents and helped me to understand what this program was about. He helped me so well that he ended up asking me to come to work for him, and I did, um, and that was over, that was 11 years ago. So you made the change from insurance sales to originating reverse mortgages because you believed in it so much that it, it felt uh, like a good idea to you, is that right? Absolutely. I saw yeah. what it did for my parents. I like the um, I like the clientele, the older people. Uh, it's just it's great to work with someone who has seasoned and understands their uh, situation, and it's great to be able to help somebody. Now, I know a little bit about your background. When you were with John at uh, Reverse Mortgage of Texas, uh, you were actually the number one salesperson while you were there. I was. So, since you've, uh, since you've split off and have gone on your own, how have you done? Well, I've done well. It took a little while to get off the ground, but I've done well this past year especially. And uh, doing well on my own, you don't have to do quite as many loans as if you were doing it with and for someone else. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why it's well. <laughs> so, yeah, I get that. So you get to keep all the commission instead of I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think uh, you mentioned you, you started in, in uh, 2015, right? I, on my own, yes. On your 15, own, yeah. yes. Your own business. And so how many loans in that year did you do? The first year, mm -hmm. only eight. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this year, uh, so far, how are you doing? 22. Wow. Wow. That's a pretty strong growth. It's a big growth, yeah. So. Can you give me uh, kind of your day in the life? I mean, what do you what do you do when you uh, when you start your day? Well, uh, lucky enough, I can start my day when and want how I want. So that's one blessing of being on my own. My client base comes to me. I don't ha I don't seek them out. So I do wow. have to be prepared for the phone to ring at any given time to capture that that client first call. So I utilize every technology I can, which is having my cell phone with me, my email with me, uh, everything with me at all times whenever I leave. So everything follows me. So the day in the life is uh, either taking care of the clients I've already got on board or, and I don't say waiting around for someone to call because I do a lot of uh, work on my website and uh, with other title companies and real estate agents trying to stay in touch with them. Uh, but 
that's what I do on a daily basis. Okay, so uh, basically your clients really come to you, the phone rings, and, and it really doesn't matter where you are. You're, you're geographically independent. As long as you have Absolutely. your cell phone and access to your computer, you can really do this anywhere, right? Oh, absolutely. You know, and that's kind of where my next, you know, phase in life is. Where are we going to go? Because it doesn't matter where we're at. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's a great advantage. And uh, your hours are your own. Do you find yourself working many hours now as you used to when you were working for another company? I find I work it differently. Yes, it may be as many hours, but not in a given uh, string of hours. You know, my time is, again, my own. I may be talking to someone at 8 o'clock in the evening, but I may have not talked to anyone all day long. So, the time is, it's not a 40-hour work week by any means, no. Mm -hmm. And if I was probably a better time management person, I could, <laughs> could tone that down, but I like being available for someone anytime. So, again, I, I'm may leave today and be gone for five hours, but when I get back, I will need to uh, make some phone calls. So it may take 20 minutes. Now let's talk a little bit about, you mentioned that uh, you've got referrals, your phone rings, uh, but all of your business doesn't come from referrals. Your phone rings from other sources, including your website, which I understand is very good, and you uh, actually are at the top of the rankings in Dallas, Texas for reverse mortgage loans, is that right? I am, and you know, I can't say that I did that on my own. I, of course, have good people around me, and I think that that's the best part, is surrounding yourself with the right people to help you, and which yeah. I've done. So my website, yes, it's, it's ranked high in Dallas, and really, uh, even though I'm a Texas, uh, I'm licensed in Texas, and I can do loans anywhere in the state of Texas, most of my business comes from Dallas because of my website. So I'm working close to home. But that's amazing that uh, you are at that level in Google as opposed to the big companies that are scrambling to try to do that. And that's organic traffic, right? That's not that's not costing you anything. Not a penny. Clicks. Well, you're not paying per yeah. click and that kind of thing. No. Yeah. Not yeah. A, not a penny. So your customer acquisition costs are essentially nothing, correct? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure yeah. how much of that I really want people to know, but absolutely no. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I understand. It's just you and I talking, so nobody's going to hear this. <laughs> no. I, I think yeah. uh, I think it's uh, the thing that really impresses me about that, though, is that an individual still can get to that that ranking, that level where you can generate traffic from organic traffic on Google without spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to do it like uh, the big corporations are trying to do right now. And I did that in the first year. I did spend yeah. money on pay-per-click and all of that, and I didn't find that it worked well. Mm -hmm. Building a website with good content and continuing to build more content is why my rankings are where they're at. So would you say that that's, uh, I mean, is that a, a process that takes a, a month, six months, a year? When do you get to that level where you're really starting to generate this organic traffic? I didn't get phone calls from my website like I do today for over a year. It took okay. a year. Okay. So I'd say good one year, and then I started seeing the phone ring from that. So in that case, uh, would you say that it's, it's safe to say that you really need about a year worth of being able to build this business before you can really start to count on it as a as an income source. Absolutely, because yeah. I spent uh, and I and I spent a lot of money the first year in buying leads so I could get some revenue to keep building, the, you know, the things I wanted to do. Got it. How much selling is involved in what you do? You know, I think other people say there's a lot of selling involved in a reverse mortgage. I don't feel that it, it's a sales job or even a product that you should sell. I think that the reverse mortgage is something that fits a need and makes helps someone have a better life and taking that into consideration is why I think my business has grown so well. I don't, I am not a salesperson and I really have an altruistic heart. I really want to make sure that this is really something that 
it's for them, just like it was for my parents. I treat everybody exactly the same way I would want my parents treated and really make sure it's it's a good thing. Yeah. So essentially, someone comes to you, you, you identify that they actually do have a need, you just basically put it out and say, here, this is an opportunity for you, would you like it? And if they agree with you, they're, they're going to originate the loan. If they don't agree with you, then you say, well, it's very nice talking with you. And uh, <laughs> Well, yes, and then also, though, helping them to understand whether it really is good for them, because sometimes it just isn't. You know, mm -hmm. they, they may have a need, but it may be a, a short-term uh, need. And I want to point that out and make sure that they're not getting into an expensive loan that they didn't need but for a little bit of time. There's other mm -hmm. ways to do that. So I've turned people away, per se, saying, you know, I just don't think this is the, the right thing for you, just as much as I've said, yeah, this is perfect. So you're saying you're uh, one of the few uh, loan originators with integrity, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> Within so many words, yes. <laughs> Now, let's talk a little bit about why then you do this exclusively. You don't do any traditional loans. You don't do loans against the houses when someone's buying them and that kind of thing. You just simply do reverse mortgage loans. Why? That's it. Well, one, coming from an insurance industry and straight into reverse mortgages, I, I was green and didn't know anything about uh, mortgage origination, any kind of loans. I didn't know anything. So in my baby years of learning the reverse mortgage, it was easier to keep it clean cut and stick with people who knew just that business. So between the title companies and the um, wholesale lenders out there, I like sticking with people that just do reverse. I can do a forward mortgage. I just would be lost on what to do. And mm -hmm. I'm, you know, too long in the tooth now to start adding anything <laughs> else in. Yeah, you know, it's. Uh, uh, that's the whole idea of this show. It's, uh, you know, the third chapter of our lives on our terms and trying to trying to figure out how to do that and uh, do that successfully is the, is the challenge. So going back to that, that clientele again, though, the reason why I like the reverse mortgage so well is I don't have those youngsters who are, you know, wanting to get in that first time house and all of that. And there's so much excitement going on and this is a, this is a slow sell and so it kind of does fit my age and being able to just kind of relax with someone and the younger they are they don't relax well so I like that's why I like the, the reverse mortgage as well now what kind of qualifications as far as licensing and things did you have to do in order to be able to get to where you're at you know, when I started this, it was a much simpler process back 11 years ago, and you just had to get your Texas loan officer's license, and there was um, a very easy test to do. Since then, it's gone national, so you have to have a national test, and then I've also gone in and taken a universal test, so I could be licensed in any state uh, just by signing without having to go through another test. So now it would be a national test and then a Texas test. And those are the only two things to get a uh, mortgage loan originator license. Okay. But it yeah. is by state. Mm. Okay. So it's by state, but they have to do a nationwide test. Is that right? Yes. And 20 and hours of uh, core education. And that's, there's a program set up for that. Okay. Now you're, you're a broker. You know, what's the difference between just a, a regular license and a broker's license? You, well, there's really no difference in the licensing aspect. So mm -hmm. the, the license is the same, but you to be a broker, you have to license a company. So the test is exact. I've already taken the test to be a loan originator, and those tests also go for broker. Oh, so okay. My, but I have to broker and get a license for the actual company, and then one for an individual. So being a broker, all I have to do, I, I now run all my loans as a loan originator through my broker, and I could actually have other loan originators underneath me and you know get revenue from them as well. I choose not to. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Uh, this is Boomer Income Ideas, so uh, we're, I want to talk a little bit about income. You don't have to tell us your income, but give, a, give me a, uh, kind of a low and high scale of an originator whether they're just working for a company kind of part-time uh, to someone who is really working at it full-time and can 
you know, if you have the top end of the scale, what kind of range can someone expect in in doing this job? Well, and I'm going to preface this with saying, if anyone's starting in this business, becoming a loan officer for someone else is your best bet to get your your feet wet and to okay. know you know the ins and outs. There's a lot to it. And I, I couldn't have really gone out on my own if I had not had the education and the training behind me. Money-wise, um, anywhere from a thousand dollars a loan to five thousand dollars a loan. Okay. Depending on the size of the loan. Okay. So, if it's a thousand dollars a loan and someone does five loans for the month, they're they're making five thousand dollars, correct? Right. And that's my point that they're in in this business. It truly is a real career. It's not just kind of a part-time thing. It's not uh, one of those things that that uh, nobody really makes any money at, except for you know a handful at the top. You can really make uh, a, a decent income, and you can make a substantial income. Okay. So you, can, okay. you can start. You can go anywhere from uh, say a couple thousand dollars a month to to uh, tens of thousands of dollars a month. Is that correct? Absolutely, and the great thing about it is the freedom. Even if you're in the retail end and you're working for a lender, you still have the freedom of you're working from home, and you don't have to get up and fight that traffic, and you don't even have to get up and dress if you don't want to because nobody's going to see you. <laughs> <laughs> so you except, can get up and work except, in your pajamas all day. Except, except your spouse. And they, well, they already, and then, you, they already know what you look like in that condition, right. so it that's really doesn't right. matter. <laughs> Uh, give me uh, give me three pros to being in this business and three cons to being in the business. The three pros, I would say, is the freedom. That's number one for me. I like the freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, two is being able to feel like you really help someone. That to me is a is a good feeling every day. I'm sad mm -hmm. when I can't help someone, so that may be a con, but. Um, and the money, you know, the money for what I do, I I think is wonderful. So freedom, helping someone, and income. Okay. The pros, the cons. Um, one is the disappointment of not being able to help someone. Um, for me, that's big, and that may not be a con for everyone. Uh, there's the compliance, I think, is difficult for me. There's a lot of compliance to deal with. But if you're a loan officer, you have someone else dealing with, for, you know, They'll deal with that for you. And um, the con is because I'm on business only for myself, I have no one to back me up. So there really is no, if I want to take a vacation, I'm going to have to shut down for a week. So I need to find someone to help me with that. But again, if you're a loan officer, you won't have that trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, which leads me to the next question. Um, the amount of capital required to get into this business. If you're working for, if you go to work for a company, uh, you really don't have a capital outlay as far as uh, anything other than supporting yourself while you're getting up to speed. Is that right? That's true. And most companies, if you're going in on the retail end, will usually either um, give you a, 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 a stipend every month. Mm -hmm for usually three to four months so that way you can get on your feet and then you start originating you know you're going to have a pipeline it takes a little while to build that pipeline right. so you really don't have to have that much capital to begin with if you're going to be a broker you really do have to have a um, you know anywhere between twenty five thousand to sixty thousand in your assets in order to be able to have a lender want to take you on okay. but if you're going to go in as a retail you really don't have to have anything. Right. I got it. Okay. Um, what advice would you give to someone who is looking at this and, and thinking, gee, this is something that uh, might be just really right for me. Uh, what would you tell them? What What should they expect? Where should, you know, where would you, uh, you've already mentioned that you're suggesting that they go to work for a lender first before they try to do it out on their own. What other kind of advice would you give them? shop around what what lender you would want to become in their retail everybody everyone is different and I have a lot of friends who are loan officers and for doing only reverse and they're in so many different companies and I can hear the difference in their contracts and in how much money that they're making and what what they expect out of them 
So if you want the freedom, you need to shop one that is not going to make you sit at a desk eight hours a day and be tethered to your phone. Um, at first, you may need to do that in order to get the, the leads, you know, built up and your pipeline built up. So um, I just say shop around and what, what company you really want to work for. Not all of well, them are the same. Yeah, I, yeah, I understand. Well, Brenda, I think that this has been uh, very informative. I really appreciate uh, your time and your input on this. On this Thanks interview. for letting me share. And Thanks for letting me share. Okay, if it's okay, I'd like to just kind of check back in with you every once in a while, just see how you're doing, and and uh, you know, kind of get your input on on how the industry is progressing, because I know that that's it's constantly in change, and you're it at changes. the you're at the, uh, the the pulse of that. So, so again, thank you. I appreciate it, and hopefully, we'll uh, see you soon. You're welcome. Thanks for having me again. Thanks, Dan. All right. Hey, thanks for joining us on this episode. I hope that you found it informative. Uh, please uh, check out the notes section for more links and relevant information. And if you like what you've seen, please make sure that you uh, like us on Facebook and also subscribe so that you're up to date on a weekly basis of what we're doing. Thanks again. Hope to see you next week.